Good morning, Farms and Wildcats. Welcome to another wonderful week here at Farms and Middle School. I bring you the morning messages for the week of November 15, 2023. We always begin our slides with reviewing our motto. And what is a motto? It's what we live by, what we stand for, and what we operate on each and every day. I am unique. I am pursuing excellence. I am a life. I am developing. I am a lifelong learner. Together, we are Farnsley. All of this makes us just as unique as we are. So, I'll be talking very specifically about what this means and what we can do about it. Okay, um, giving some shout outs to Miss Pissarro's getting a shout out to Todd A for being a helpful, being very very helpful. Miss Collins agrees. Miss Olivia would like to give a shout out to Skylar S and Briley C for being such huge helpers to her and the office staff um, in the past week as the office assistants. Another shout out goes to Rico C given by Ms. Collins. He, this particular student found an iPad outside, took it home because all the, do all the doors of the school were locked. He charged it for the student and brought it to school the next day uh, when, when we found the owner. Thank you so much for being an outstanding citizen and doing what is right by all. Um, just always reminders, don't forget, when you arrive to school, capture your gym or the library is your, are your options. You can do so, and you need to stay there during the entire duration of uh, morning coding until we go to our lockers. Um, don't forget, if you do need a day use advice, you stop there and get that before you go into your uh, chosen area. Uh, once you realize that you don't have it, stop and get it, and then be on your way. Um, cell phone policy, you know what that is. Off and in your locker, if it is seen, hanging out of your pocket, if it is heard, it can be confiscated and logged into the office for progressive discipline. Don't forget, um, we go to our lockers before and after school. So any coats, jackets, or uh, larger backpacks, not the drawstring backpacks, and your electronic devices need to remain in your locker. These are the only things you need to pretty much carry with you on a regular basis. That being said, hallway expectations, right-hand side sink and files your voice level, and most importantly, no horse plan because it is a safety matter and we don't want things to get out of hand. Um, I'm sure everyone agrees that they like to come to a school that is calm and safe and orderly. So let's make sure that happens. We round out the week with more um, after-school activities. Beta Club is meeting today. Anime, Drama Club, Yearbook, you name it. Uh, Big Smiles Dental is coming today, tomorrow, and on Friday, and I believe they are following up on Monday as well. We have a very uh, quick and short week um, coming up. Don't forget the basketball game tomorrow. Hope you're able to attend. Um, there is a criteria for you to attend, and your administrators will let you know if you can or not. Those um, uh, Jeans Day is on Friday. Uh, supporting yearbook, supporting the yearbook uh, staff. Remember, if you have holes in the jeans above your knee, they must not show skin. So be creative. Wear jogging, wear some sweatpants, jogging pants, leggings, what have you underneath. Um, on Monday, you forgot to write this on here, but we will be highlighting those students who made the honor roll. And on Monday, on the twentieth, you are allowed to dress down, dress down in um in your school appropriate attire the school appropriate means nothing profane no vulgarity nothing inappropriate for middle school you need to cover from your shoulders all the way down to at least your knees be mindful of that that's kind of the general your skin should not be showing from your shoulders to your knees so get creative or what have you or not just wear dress down you're fine with that, all right? Um, so those are those who made the honor roll on the 20th. On the 21st, we are allowing those who made perfect attendance, perfect attendance, to have a pajama day, pajama day. Um, unless you are a student in the seventh grade going to the Louisville Zoo that day, we are asking that you, uh, if you made perfect attendance, only those who earned perfect attendance, and it's only 47, which is very good in the seventh grade, they um, are allowed to have a second dress down day, a second day if they have honor roll, 
and perfect attendance in that order, okay? Thanksgiving rounds out all of next week, and then we follow up with uh, more games. Picture retake day is the following Tuesday when we return, and a lot of things going on, all right? So don't forget, JCPS uh, high school open houses are in full effect. Today being the 15th, I believe Central's is coming up tomorrow. And those are the other outlines um if you want to know more um jcps high school application window is open so get your applications in and ready to go immediately immediately do not wait um what you'll do is if you wait to the last minute you'll realize there's a lot more requirements that they need from you that you may not get time to get it done so don't wait don't hesitate get that taken care of prp um has a winter guard interest meeting on the 29th there's that and delta academy has registration it's open today uh, apply online and uh farnsley has wildcats has a winter where the window for ordering your things is open now until the 26th so get your things now order it now it'll come in december okay so Think about it. It's going to be a little cold. People are like, oh, I wish I could have something. We don't keep these things on stock. You have to order them directly from here. So I'd like to talk about a little known um, Hispanic history, for instance. This is Evelyn Cisneros. Um, she made history by being the first Latina prima ballerina in the U.S., the Mexican um American, this Mexican American had played a Princess Aurora in Sleeping Beauty, Sugar Plum Fairy in, in The Nutcracker, Odetta Odell in Swan Lake, and countless other roles. She is a phenomenal dancer and art artist. And learn more about Evelyn Cisneros. Um, Want to take some time to talk very specifically about your Kentucky Summative Assessment. Students, you should have received a copy of this in your mail. Um, this is a sample of one and what it looks like. I'd like to break it down for a couple minutes to let you know what it even means and how it relates to you. Depending on the number of tests that you took, the you'll get a bar very similar to these, okay? If you took another test, then it would show right here how you did on that test. This rating scale I'll let you know how that you did in each one of those testing areas. So this is reading up here. This is math here. And this is the rubric or rating scale. Novice is the lowest performing. Next level is apprentice. Next is proficient. And, next, next, and finally, distinguished. We are aiming for proficient and distinguished for all students. So... If you hit in the novice or apprentice range, you do have some work to do and what your teachers and other staff are working very closely with you to see how you're doing. Now you're wondering like how far into that range am I? Am I all the way at this uh, at this level if I'm an apprentice? Am I all the way at the beginning level? Am I in the middle of it? Or am I all the way at the end almost ready to move over to proficient? That's what we want to move you toward, okay? So this is the scoring range for proficiency, for instance. If you were novice, you had to score below a 504. So up to a 503 is a novice. Between 504 and 517 is an apprentice. Between 517 um, uh, and... Well, 518 on up makes you proficient, and then distinguish is like 526 or above, okay? for And it's different ratings for reading and for math, slightly different numbers for reading and for math. But overall, it's right about this range. So this particular student got an apprentice in reading, and then they also got a, a proficient in math, which as you see on these on this rating, they're really close in reading to moving over to the proficient level. They need, based on this, they got a 516. They need to score at least a 518 to be in the proficient level, okay? And on the mathematics, they scored a 523, which is right on the cusp 
of being distinguished, which this particular student needs to get from a 523 up to a 526 to, in order to be distinguished. Now, that being said, there is a backside to this. And on this backside, it breaks down more of a comparison on how you did, this is your score on the top bar, to how the school average, how the um, district average and the state average was for this particular grade and for in reading. So in this particular grade in reading, again, uh, don't forget, if you were novice, your bar is red. If you're apprentice, your bar, this color bar, when it's talking about you, is yellow. If you're proficient, it's green. If you're distinguished, it's blue, okay? Being that, that is where this color bar is, and this is how that, how you're doing. If you scored, like this particular student scored a 516, that's what, how they are. Compared to the rest of the school, they were above the rest of the school. Compared to the district, they were above the district. Compared to the state, they're a little bit below the state. Um, again, conversely, in a map, this particular student was uh, scored a 523 in math. And so in comparison to the school, they're well above the school. Comparison to the district, they're well above the district. Compared to the state, they're well above the state. So that gives you a good comparison and so forth. This is also a link to, for more resources and what to do. Now, let's talk about what does it mean? Okay, now that you have the results, what does this mean? Well, in essence, it just gives you a snapshot on where you currently are performing. But this is just one snapshot. We take the map, map test three times a year. You have a report card four times a year, but you get the KSA one time a year. This is just one snapshot on how you're doing. Um, this is not a, oh, no, I did, I'm doing horrible. Uh, oh, I'm doing wonderful. No, all of it together really gives a greater understanding on how you are performing. So focus on all of these areas. Also with this, focus on what areas you would like to improve on in each one of the areas. How would you improve each of the areas? Because we want you to grow. We want you to move upward. We definitely don't want you to move backwards, but we don't want you to stay the same either. So that being said, be cognizant in the things that you can do to improve. For instance, in reading, perhaps you need to work on vocabulary de uh, development or te text evidence, maybe even being able to read lengthier text to be able to synthesize. Depends. Um, maybe in math, you need working on computations. So maybe you practice more in how to uh, compute <clears throat> different problems. Or how do you read graphs and then decipher graphs? Your teacher will be able to share with you very specifically what areas you need, especially during Genius Hour. Depending now, I want you to listen to this. Depending on the high school you wish to go into, I am not just talking about eighth graders. I'm talking about seventh and sixth graders as well, because depending on what high school you wish to get into, they look at how you perform on these assessments especially in seventh grade. Why do I say in seventh grade? Because the tests do not get re get the results. We don't get the results until October of that year. So that being said, they want to know how you did in by seventh grade of your seventh grade year. So do your best to improve, okay? That's all the announcements I have for you today. Remember the difference between a good day and a bad day is your attitude. Let's make it a great one.